In Gatwick, a flight has just arrived from Trinidad. It's a well-known source of cocaine, and sniffer dog Rossi has just seconds to pick out any smugglers hiding amongst the innocent passengers. Okay, thank you. Your voice is right the thank you. That's it. Okay. Suddenly, Rossi picks up a scent and targets a woman in a white jumper. Just stand still for me. UK border sniffer dogs are trained to pinpoint the exact location of any drugs. Rossi indicates on the woman's back. Come. Are you together? Are you training by yourself? The passenger seems nervous. But after the initially strong indication, Rossi loses interest. Well. OK, thank you, madam. That's fine. Thank you. He basically pulled to get to her uh, or get to her scent, so I dropped the lead, and he was all around her rucksack, and He's he dropped the floor, so he tried to get it underneath it. Back down into the channels anyway, just in case your guys have picked anything up down there. Yeah, I might see what's in the bag anyway. Meanwhile, Gatwick's newest drug dog, Barney, is examining the baggage from the same flight. Barney gives his strongest indication yet on this black and white spotted suitcase. I've got a feeling it could be this lady here. Officers watch as the same woman collects the bag. And it is. All right, thank you. With two separate indications, the officers think she must be smuggling cocaine. The team must keep the suspect under surveillance to make sure she doesn't slip away. But surprisingly, it's her who approaches the officers to ask for some directions. Fitz intercepts the passenger. Hi, where are you traveling from today? Um, Piaco, Trinidad. Trinidad? Yeah. You travel on your own? Yeah. Okay, just have a quick word if that's all right. Hello. But now the suspect seems more relaxed, even as Barney gives another unmistakable indication. The sniffer dogs believe the bags contain cocaine, but now it's up to Fitz to find it. In Manchester, UK border officers are on the lookout for people bringing in more than 200 cigarettes on a flight from Gran Canaria. They spot two bags full of cigarettes. Kevin puts them back on the carousel, giving the passengers the opportunity to declare the excess, using the phone provided in the customs red channel. Ignoring the signs, they walk through nothing to declare. And the passengers aren't happy to hear that the goods will now all be seized. When you walk in here, so I, can you categorically <laughs> I can do yeah, because I watched it. I went round the back of the belt, I actually the flight. I seen you pick up your bags off the belt. I watched you walk towards the green channel. You never went anywhere near the goods to the clear channel. You walked straight to the green channel saying you had not the red phones have been there for years, but the man's still hoping to bend the rules. As the officers are, they said, there's signs out there. No, there's nothing that says but we have to pick a phone up, though, is there? Come on. We can't, there's nothing we can do. If you had declared them at the red point, you could have paid the juicer. something you can do. It's not. No, I've never brought anything back in life. Now other passengers decide to get involved. No reason, the cousin. They did a lot of It's not the fans you met. I'm not talking to you, mate. I'm talking to you. Well, I'm not listening to you. Right, I'll just show you the red point where the gentleman that's just been very abusive to us about not having the opportunity to declare the cigarettes, this is where it should have come. Bringing in excess goods, you should declare them at the red point. The gentleman's argument was there is no staff behind the red point. We tried to explain that there's a red phone there for him to use, and he said, well, he shouldn't have to do that. There's no signs telling you to do that. And it quite clearly is. It says there, goods to declare, you must speak to an officer or make your declaration using the red telephone. So he's not got a letter stand on, I'm afraid. And now the man decides to turn nasty. The fact that, you know, you've got an asshole like you and you've got a manager who's got no discretion, you're not going to be a sleeping before. Unfortunately, that's why people get, it's just, they get upset because having a cigarette seized from them. 
Despite clearly being guilty, the men haven't finished abusing the officers just yet. Back in Gatwick, the suspected cocaine smuggler picked out by the sniffer dogs is now being searched. They did this over there, so it doesn't matter what, um... Sorry. Oh, you pack it, pack or whatever. Right, oh, okay. Because they pretty much messed it up. Who was that? They checked the bags and whatever across there. They checked them before you came yeah. out, did they? they right. Did the same thing. Oh, okay. So they pretty much messed it up. So. Right. With three separate sniffer dog indications on the bags. Okay, I just needed a quick x ray of your suitcase, all right? Yeah. UK border officer Fitz is convinced he'll find something inside. It doesn't seem to give us that much information about it, so probably have to do a further examination. I'll take it to the tall room and have a look, have a closer look, actually. Surprisingly, Fitz can find no sign of cocaine. And even the drug swab is clear. Right, you actually ascertain there's nothing in there. No, which is a bit of a shame, really. As it was a good indication by the dogs, I must admit. It's disappointing, but with such strong suspicions, Fitz isn't willing to give up the search just yet. That's the thing that you plug into the television. Right. It's a games console dance mat, but something doesn't add up. Has you got a PlayStation with it? No. So why would you have one of these anyway? Yeah. Right, round two. <laughs> I mean, it is heavy as hell. Fitz then spots the clue he's been after. The actual casing looks like it's already been removed once before. This acts like a sniffer dog. It's just looking for minute particles of uh, substances that are standing in sky high. It's got to be there. Suspicions are now even higher. But where are the drugs? This is that rubber impregnation. That's what I think it is. Mm. Ever seen it in a dance mat? Have you no. tried doing it on that? Can you break a yeah, bit off? Um... Can you break a bit off? No, you can do if you want to. The material's gone blue. Oh. Mm. Positive, then. Amazingly, the rubber inside the dance mat, it's full of cocaine. Uh, the time is uh, ten past ten. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. It just goes to show, with smugglers using ever more devious methods, the officers can take nothing for granted. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, do you understand? OK. The officer's persistence has paid off, and yet another smuggler has been caught red-handed. Uh, north. The drugs were ingeniously hidden, and one member of the team deserves a special reward. Knock yourself out, you little star. Well, he's just had his second job in three days to um, cocaine detections, which is unprecedented for such a new dog. He's only been in the job for six months. It's, it's brilliant. But in the meantime, he's going to get this as a treat because it's just an unbelievable job for such a young dog. And while Barney enjoyed his bone, the woman won't be enjoying her freedom. She pleaded guilty and could be facing around 10 years in prison. Back in Manchester, the angry passengers want to appeal against the decision to seize their cigarettes. But they're now refusing to sign the paperwork. I had 600 ticks for a couple of minutes. After two hours, the men are starting to test the officer's patience. There you go. It's that is my argument. Right. Whether it goes to appeal or not, right. he won't get his cigarettes right. back. Okay. You won't get your okay. cigarettes back. Okay. Because you've entered the goods, nothing to okay. declare, Channel, stating that you've got nothing to declare. And I followed you straight to the green channel. Dad, just f it. Can't be ass with this. Just job worse. Well, I'll tell you that we've got more pressing things to do than stand here arguing with you. I, I couldn't agree with you more. So, the already tense exchange is about to escalate. So again, you need to just learn that you, you learn what? Man, like, what? Are, are you, are you, why are you talking like that? You Don't talk to why me are you like I'm a piece of shit, lad. Yeah, hold on, you're the one you were talking to us like you're so shit. Nothing for no reason. Yeah, don't, try to tell what, what, yo, yo, don't try to tell me what to do. Stand up. He's having a conversation. I'll tell you now, you can have less of that now. Otherwise, I'll arrest you. I'll have you upstairs. Right, let's just pack it in now. And they were getting quite abusive. And it was getting to the stage where we thought they might be having to arrest them for obstruction 
or even assault. He was getting close to them. It looked like they were going to lash out. Well, right, I've not been way rude out. or abusive job. I've tried to be careful. Luckily, we, we talked some round and they've left in the end, but I'm not very happy. We've had the cigarettes seized. Just straight down there and then round to your left. The illegal cigarettes will now be destroyed. Coming up, Cash Dog Miller sniffs out some lies. There's wages or... Is that, have you been working in England then? I thought you came here on holiday. In Manchester's Terminal 2, a flight has just touched down from Dubai. A man acting strangely has been intercepted by the UK border officers. Inside the suspect's bags, Gary has found flight manuals and pilot training information. He's just looking very edgy, very nervous, but he's got, a, he's got all sorts of literature on planes. He says he's just an enthusiast, but he says it looks too detailed, really. It looks like confidential stuff. So, for you to draw a flight desk simulation of planes, where are you getting that information from? Internet. Internet. So everything that you've got in front of me here, you are copied from the internet. What? The internet, yeah. All the stuff that you have in here. Yeah. It's, it's just something very, very strange. Yeah. So you just have to look at him and he wants to go. I know he's looking at you. The gentleman comes through off the Dubai flight, some single traveller. He seemed nervous in the way. He was entering the channels, head down, um, sluggish walking, avoiding eye contact with me, to be honest. Basically found a lot of literature with regards to um, flying flight schools, avionics of the plane, and various courses with regards to cabin crew. As Gary digs deeper, the details become more and more incriminating. Why have you got information about fighter planes? Well. Yeah, combat yeah. weapons. Well, these, are, these were, I was, I was interested to join the RA points. You, you were interested? Oh, sorry. Join the RA for um, Royal Air Force. Oh, okay, so you're trying to self teach yourself by learning from the internet. How, no, how no, to fly no. planes? No, 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 not from that. I'm just getting, the, just getting some information from the internet. That's not so you're just getting some information. The man's lack of answers is worrying Gary. Of aircraft by the looks of where this stuff. I'm just making a book, that's all. So you're now making a book? No, no, I'm not making a book. What I'm doing is that I go on, I go on this, these planes all the time. And you can see my passport. I went to flying school in Bangladesh. The, 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 the aircraft were too old. What was the name of flying school? Bangladesh flying school. Okay. How long did I find flying school? For? No, I, I wasn't there. For, I wasn't there for long. I just went to see. You the, just told me you were flying school. Yeah, flying I school. went there to see the aircraft. That's all. Just to look at this stuff. So you're not, you didn't, weren't taught anything in no. lessons at all. No, no, I would not took any like trial lessons. You know. Well, I'm not like, doing anything wrong. I'm not. Okay, I'm, like, like I asked you before, are you just like sort of learning to be a pilot from information you were downloading? From the internet. No, no. I mean, so where's yeah, all this information? That I've, 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 I've made them. I've collected. No one helped me. That's all I can say. Well, no. I mean, I'm, I'm no sort of aircraft um, specialist, but some of this seems quite sensitive. In the wrong, if this got in the wrong hands, it could be quite. Gary finds a hard drive with more aircraft data. Aircraft that you've downloaded off the, the, uh, the internet. Yeah. Hmm? When did you last go to Bangladesh before this trip? The man's odd behaviour and contradictions are increasingly alarming. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. You said you travelled all the time. Yeah, I do, but it was a passport thing. Oh, I remember when I travelled. No, you're, you're, you're not making, uh, not making sense, really. The man's answers are becoming more oh, vague well. and his story sounds stranger all the time. When I was young, I went to college, to school, I had friends. I lost, I've lost everything. I lost my friends, mates, everything, everyone's gone. He doesn't seem to be able to back anything up that he's talking about. All his answers are sort of wavering. He's saying one thing, but he's not really backing it up and backtracking on things. So he's not, uh, he's not telling us the truth about something. So we're going to uh, swap his bag, screen it for uh, explosives. 
The officers believe the man may be involved in terrorist activities. And the suspect is saying nothing to explain the documents. Gary has called in Special Branch while they await the result of the swab for explosives. On a night shift in Dover, officers are monitoring outbound vehicles on the hunt for large amounts of cash which may be linked to crime. Ben is questioning a Polish vehicle, looking for any clues that they may have something to hide. How much money have you brought to England with you? 3,000. And are you t how much are you taking back to Poland now? How much money do you have left? 1,600. Is that between all of you, yes? No. no 1,600 pounds each? Yeah. Ben thinks the group are telling lies. So you each brought 3,000 pounds to England, yeah. Yeah. and you all back take 1,600 back with you. And it's all in 50 pound notes as well? Yeah. And where, where did you get the money from then? From Polish exchange fund. And they, they just gave it in 50s, not in smaller? OK, that's good. If you can bring your money and yourselves and come out the car and then we go. The specially trained sniffer dog will now search the Polish vehicle for cash to see if the passengers are telling the truth. As Miller and dog handler Bo search the car, Ben presses the passengers on their story. So what have you spent your money on while you've been here in England? And our fun. Clubs and drinking and stuff like that. OK, and you've... But you've all got 1,600. The car is clear. But Miller picks up a cent in one of the rucksacks. Is there more money in that bag? No? Just show me this bag. The man denies having any more cash, but Miller has found an envelope which gives Ben reason to believe the group are lying to him. So that's where money's been. Was that in this bag, is it? All right. It's wages or? Yeah, wages. That's had money in, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it was. This, it was yeah, yeah, so that's, was, why, the, yeah, was, that's why the dog yeah. smells it. So, have you been working in England then? I thought you came here on holiday. Yes, yeah, those days were on holiday. Who was on holiday? Yeah. But not you. You, yeah. you work in England. So, why didn't you say you work in England? Do you all work in England? No. no. So Are you sure? It's not a problem if you work in England. I'd, just tell me if you do. You don't work in England. You're on holiday. Yeah. So it's not wages that you're taking back to Poland. You sure? Yeah. What about yours? Is yours wages that you take home? Yeah. Because it 859, 803, 1600 pounds, 1600 pounds, 16. So do you work in England or? Yeah, yeah I think no, you work yeah, in England. Yeah. So why you say you don't work I in don't England? Know. It's not a problem now. You're no. Polish. You can work in England. Okay. Yeah. yeah? OK, so you do work in England? Yeah, sorry for the lie. So if it hadn't been for your wage slips, you'd have been all right? The needless lie has been uncovered. Obviously now, the Poland's in the European Union. They can work in the UK, but for whatever reason, I don't know whether they're scared to tell us the truth that they're actually working here, or whether it's just a case of they don't want to say how much money they're taking out of the country, so they've all come out with the story that they've come here on holiday. Each got £1,600 left, and then they're taking it back to Poland. So it didn't really ring true. 1600 $1,600, $1,600, OK? It's clever, really, because sometimes that happens. You know, someone lies about the amount of money they've got, and then the dog will indicate on an item of paperwork that's been with their money, which is obviously why the dog indicated. It's a barefaced lie which officers are used to. Sometimes we don't know why they lie, but sometimes we do find it out, and it's, it's the smallest of reasons, really. The passengers have done nothing illegal and are free to go. In Manchester, the officers are dealing with something potentially far more serious. They've stopped a passenger with a bag full of sensitive aircraft data. The explosive swab found no trace, but now they found evidence of multiple foreign trips paid for by someone else. Basically, uh, we found a lot of information about air aircraft, aircraft flight simulators, um, different magazines, different information on f fuel from aircraft. What planes are these? Are these small planes? The commercial aircraft? No, no, no. The, the, the Boeing planes, the aircraft, the real aircraft, the big long, big long. <coughs> yeah. Gary calls in Special Branch to tell them about the suspect's strange story. My mum's boyfriend pays for it as well. Not only my dad. I've got my mum's boyfriend. Yeah. 
In a climate of global terrorism, the officers need to be on the lookout for all suspicious behavior. I want the cabin crew, but you can keep me for long because I'm not doing any work on these. This is the list of. That's on the passport, I've, I've got on that, That's on the passport, I've. He's flown. He's flown. And does that tell him what's in his passport? That's on the in 2003-2003, Gary and the UK border officers have taken the questioning as far as they can. They now hand the suspect over to Special Branch for further investigation. Okay, okay. Do you want to get your bags and just come and have a word with us? Cheers, mate. I mean, I'm... I'm uh... There's nothing secret. I won't keep a secret. OK, no I problem. Mean, yeah, no worries. For Gary and the team, the strange encounter comes to an end. It was bizarre, I can't understand why he's doing all these trips. This could be in his own little fantasy. Mm -hmm. He might be a bit of a fruitcake for it. Yeah. <laughs> the man is led away for questioning while the border officers wait to find out the cause of the man's strange behavior. The man with the suspicious aircraft documents was questioned by Special Branch, but was later released without charge, and no further action taken against him. In Manchester, a flight from Pakistan has just arrived at Terminal 2. Flight crews are also subject to regulations, and today, UK border officer Liz is using a new thermal camera to search the pilot. OK, that's fine. Could you just turn around and face the wall for me, please? The pilot takes the new security measure in good spirit. Do I get to see? Uh, uh, you, you, you can't, unfortunately. Oh, you can see me if you want. <laughs> he even wants to have a go himself. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I just... It's all in monochrome, like, uh, not coloured. No. It's not coloured. No. OK. okay. It's a thermograph kind it's, of thing. Yeah, it's a thermal imager. So I'm cool. You're cool to go, yeah. <laughs> the officers find nothing untoward on the crew, so turn their attentions to the passengers. Kevin spots a bag bulging with rectangular packages and tracks it into the channels. Inside, he finds well over the allowance of 200 cigarettes and wants some answers. Are you here on holiday or are you working? Yes, I am on holiday. On holiday? Yeah. On your own? Just yeah. you? Just you? One. No family. Conveniently, the passenger doesn't understand. Uh, Who were the cigarettes for? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Them things on there. Who were they for? He also doesn't seem to understand the law. Sorry. They're for yourself. Yeah, yes, I would. Oh, them for myself. For sell. To sell. Yeah. You're going to sell them. Who to? Who will you sell them to? It's a surprising admission and against the law. But the man's situation gets worse when Kevin discovers he works for the airline. If it's a crew, a crew member is yeah. classed as a privileged person. Yeah. Now, if they're carrying excess amounts of cigarettes, yeah. over a thousand, well, they'd be arrested and we could prosecute them for it. Right. Now, this guy's got oh. nearly 10,000 cigarettes. Okay comes to light now that the passenger is a member of staff. He works in Karachi, and as such, he's on a staff ticket. He's classed as a privileged person, which means he has to be arrested and prosecuted. Kevin calls in the investigation team. David, just let one of them know we've got a prisoner over at C2. Crew with cigarettes. Nearly 10,000. So we just let them know we're going to have a prisoner in due course, but they're going to need a translator. Um, we're about to do the arrest. We're just waiting for an air do speak and the immigration officer to come down to facilitate that. Kevin's keen eyes picked out the smuggler, and as he works for the airline, the man may be losing his job as well as his cigarettes. UK border officers in Dover face a 24-hour tide of trucks and cars. Smugglers use the sheer volume of traffic as a cover and it's the job of the selectors to pick out vehicles to be searched. There's a selector over the freight lane that has been selecting certain vehicles. And this vehicle here that we've intercepted today is in connection with a heroin job. 
um, that they intercepted last week. With information suggesting links to a previous heroin seizure, sniffer dog Millie and handler Nicky are brought in to speed up the search. I've got a few of my colleagues having a look at the moment. There could be either a concealment space in there or even better, a large quantity of money going outward bounds. The driver isn't happy. Dealing with angry drivers is a daily hazard. I don't have no rights. That's my home. I sleep around and let dogs hurl all over my bed. When the dogs don't say, you can go in and have a look around. Let's see what I can do. I have dogs. Dogs want to let go of the walls. They have no shit. The officers have the power, but they're trying to respect the man's wishes. Well, if you're telling me you're going to put that dog on, I want her to say that you are allowed to. I am saying I do not want that dog to win that job. Yeah, I mean, what we It's very right, and I'm asking you not to put the dog on, and you're saying you are, by law, you can't, so I want you to give me a black and white. Is that fair? That's fair, I can go and get you the end. Listen, see dogs, we love dogs, up. I have no bar with dogs. No problem with dogs. Okay, well, it's my pay. I know, I know, I know what you're saying, exactly. All right. With the information linked to a previous heroin job, the driver's reluctance to let Millie into his truck is raising suspicions. The driver's obviously not too happy about the dog going in the cab, so we're just getting the forms to say that we are actually allowed to go in there. As soon as I get this letter, then we can get on with it. If Millie finds drugs, dog hair on his pillow will be the least of the driver's problems. Back in Manchester, the Urdu interpreter has arrived. <laughs> this smuggler caught with 10,000 cigarettes also works for an airline and is about to be arrested. We've had the translator explain to him exactly what's happened. He's, he's upset now because he, he's worked for the airline for 33 years. He thinks he now may be and, you know, about to lose his job but he's not only brought in nearly 10,000 cigarettes, which he's admitted he's going to sell. It's an offence. You, you can't do that, unfortunately. As he's led away to be searched, the man's nerves get the better of him. He wants to go to the toilet. Yeah. Not getting anything in there, he's in the ditch, is it? Yeah, just shut the door so he can go to the toilet. He wants to use the toilet, but because he's not been searched yet, he could have evidential stuff on him that he'd try and flush down the loop. Cigarette smugglers aren't usually accompanied to the toilets. But during the search, officers do find something in his jacket, and the man's day goes from bad to worse. A small package been found in the gentleman's pocket, and it looks like it, it could be drugs, possibly opium. I think it's possibly cannabis resin. You get a particular oh. type of resin in Pakistan. If it does turn out to be potentially drugs, yeah, it's, it's cannabis. You see it's gone that red colour. So he, he, although he's been arrested for the cigarettes, He's now going to have to be arrested again for this. OK. Cannabis. Listen. It's now 12.06. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being knownly involved in the importation of a controlled drug. You do not have to say anything. You may hold your defence if you do not mention with question in something which you may take rely on in court. Do you understand? Suddenly, the situation is crystal clear. Do you understand? Yeah. With two crimes to answer for, the consequences could be serious, even for such small amounts. 3.5 grams. Well, he's potentially going to lose his job if his airline is involved about the offences he's committed. For, for the importation of the cigarettes, if we do decide to prosecute, he could face a fine and for the importation of the drug as well. You're looking at a compound penalty, so that, again, could be a fine. So he could be facing a couple of hundred pound fine and, and potentially lose his job as well, which I believe he's been in his job for 33 years. So it was still a mistake to make this late in his career. Back in Dover, the team are dealing with the driver who doesn't want the drug dog in his cab but they've now found the rules that give them the power to search, with or without his permission. 26 and 27, that you can use the dog as a living tool, 
right, sir. With the law on their side, the team can now get on with searching the truck. What we do, we, we put the dog in now. Do you want to come and see us through stages? OK. The intelligence team selected this truck to be searched in relation to a recent heroin seizure. Sniffer Dog Millie is looking for drugs or cash which may be connected to crime. This guy's um, Irish. Um, we've had, recently, we've had quite a few jobs from Irish vehicles coming into the country, um, largely being Class A. Searching a massive truck like this can take hours, but sniffer dogs like Millie can do it in a matter of minutes. Come on, then. Millie. Okay. With the cab search over, Millie <laughs> checks the driver. OK, that's great, thank you. Good girl. No, I didn't get anything from that. Um, didn't go in the load because I frozen meat, so just did the outside and the cab. That's great, sir. Sorry about that. We've dumped the dog now, so what I'll do... I'll if do the driver thing. didn't want Millie in his cab, he certainly doesn't want her in his trailer full of meat, and the officers decide to search it themselves. They find nothing, and the truck is free to go, for now. I spoke to the selector. Um, he's happy. He's got the paperwork, and he's going to evaluate it going out. Maybe stop it coming back in, but going out, perfectly happy with it. All right, sir, thanks very much for your time. Sorry to be a problem, and there's your stuff. OK, this is the complaints, all right? If you're not happy, I've said that you've been complied. You've been no problems at all. Um, I've just said you weren't happy with the dog guide in. OK? OK, thanks very much for your time. Lorry searches do take time, and the officers are well-versed in dealing with drivers upset at the delay. We do come across that, but we are actually allowed to go in the vehicle, so she didn't mark anywhere, she had clean feet. <laughs> As an insulted Millie ambles off, the driver leaves happily in his dog hair free cab. Coming up. Are they just giving you the price of the paper over there? Yeah. A surprisingly honest passenger is given a lesson in law. Just, you can't receive I any know. payment. I don't want Do you know? In Gatwick, it's not just passengers that might be smuggling drugs. In the freight area, UK border officer Lorna and sniffer dog Diesel are searching packages from Jamaica. We're just over in the freight sheds and we're going to um, search some of the DHL courier mail. Any of the thousands of packages a day passing through Gatwick could contain cocaine. So using the skills of the sniffer dogs is vital. We come over here most days and uh, there are quite a lot of detections found over here. So it's a good area for the dog to work. Diesel, look. It's just... Lorna watches Diesel closely, waiting for any sign that he's detected drugs. Trig, do you mind having a look in that for me, please? Which one? This one. The sensitive nose of a drug dog can sometimes be alerted by a few tiny particles of cocaine innocently picked up by contamination. But today, Diesel seems unusually excited. Hold on a minute. Sit. The package has come from Venezuela, a known source of cocaine, which makes contamination seem the most likely cause of the dog indication. It looks like um, we could have some personal effects. So it looks like a pair of trainers there, a couple of baseballs, and a couple of uh, items of clothing that actually look OK. They don't look to be uh, anything suspicious about the clothing. I'll uh, just obviously a quick check of his shoes. Disappointingly, the contents look innocent and have already been examined in Venezuela. The Venezuelans, you can see, uh, they try to see if there's anything in them. It doesn't look like there has been. Have a look at a couple of baseballs. Just as it looks like a false alarm, Duncan notices the stitching's been tampered with. The actual stitching doesn't look too good on them. Um, it looks pretty um, ordinary. It claims to be an official baseball, but uh, if I try and undo the stitching a bit, Oh, you can see there on the end of the knife, actually, it looks like a white powder. That could possibly be um, cocaine in its powder form. Steve, have you got a test kit? It's starting to look like Diesel's nose was right. OK. And then just try and dab a little bit of this solution on top. And you can see there, we've had a blue reaction on the actual filter paper. And that indicates presence of cocaine from the white powder. Brilliant. It uh, looks like the dog's done pretty well. Yay, well done, Diesel. Lorna's delighted, and Diesel gets a well-earned reward. Good boy. Yay, good lad. Get it. 
Yeah, very good work by the dogs. Uh, nice indication that uh, he's uh, obviously they like like playing with ball, so you're never quite sure whether he's actually indicating or not, just wants to play with the ball. But on this occasion, he's uh, done very, very well. Thanks to Diesel, another illegal shipment of cocaine will now be destroyed. Meanwhile, across in the south terminal, a flight is just touching down from Kiev. This time, it's prohibited meat products in suitcases that the UK border sniffer dogs are looking for. The Kiev flight is normally pretty good. Um, a lot of sort of sausages and cheese and things like that. And they just don't seem to understand they're not allowed to bring it in. So um, sometimes it goes around the sort of local community quite quick. And sort of if you've hit a flight quite a bit, you'll see it sort of ease off a bit. Um, but they still seem to be bringing it in. So The EU has strict animal health rules, and it's the border officer's job to keep out any unregulated products. Do you have food in here? Apple. Yeah. Wine. Anything else? Fruit and wine are within EU regulations, but it's illicit meat that's off the menu. Sausage. Yeah. Good boy. Thank you. Okay, madam, if you just come in, mate. Where have you travelled from today? From Kiev. Kiev, okay. Are you travelling on your own? With a number of health scares in recent years, EU rules have been tightened, which catches out a lot of passengers. Okay, you're not allowed to bring any meat products or any dairy products. Yeah, that's all right. You're not in any trouble, but you're not allowed to bring them in, so we have to take them from you. Okay, let's have a look in the bag. Very good sausage. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. Lots of people lose their sausages. <laughs> she seems quite pleasant. She's not upset. She said it's good sausage. It's a shame she's lost it, but she's not upset. She hasn't moaned at me yet, so she just remember for next time. She's lost her money, and she left to buy some English sausage now. It's a small seizure, but importing products of an animal origin is a serious okay. problem. So that's 430 grams there. If you do bring meat in again, then you can get into trouble. Unlimited fine or imprisonment, even. But I doubt that will happen with a bit of sausage. OK, thank you. Just put this one to one side and we'll go and get the next passenger. And Jasper has now sniffed out a queue of passengers to be searched. In Manchester, an early morning flight from Paphos has just touched down. It's within the EU, so passengers are entitled to bring back as much tobacco as they like, as long as they aren't receiving any money. I see you've got some cigarettes there. Yeah. Who are they for? Well, for me. Yeah. All right. Are they just giving you the price that you pay for over there? As is surprised by the woman's honesty. She's already explained to me that she's going to get the cost price for some of the goods, which, as an EU traveller, is not permitted because those who aren't travelling aren't uh, entitled to that privilege. As gives her another uh, chance to explain. Can you identify what you're actually giving away to your friend, family? Well, yeah, obviously. Is it just the gold that. leaf yours? Are you giving any of the tobacco away to anybody? No, I'm going to start out on my own. Now. Have you ever rolled your own? No. So I why? Can buy machines. You can. I'll, I will give presents away as them if that's yeah. okay. Are you saying to me that once you've finished your cigarettes, you're going to start rolling? No, I'll give All them right. as presents. Yeah, I'll take yeah. them off. No, 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 I'm not going to take them out. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying to me. The woman now says she'll give away the tobacco as presents, which is fine, but she's still making things difficult. Is this all your luggage? Yeah. Did you pack everything yourself? Yeah. Do you understand what you can and can't bring into the country? Like, yeah. you can't bring any controlled drugs, like indecent obscene material, firearms? No, well, firearms. Tell you I have... Oh, just a Yeah? Do you understand you can't bring them into the country? No, I've got 10 guns in there, 14... OK, sure now... I hope you haven't. Take them okay. Really... Right. Well, I don't want to take them off you, okay? As tries again to help the woman keep her tobacco. But what I need you to understand is that when you bring goods in for somebody else, I asked you a question. The question was, are you just getting the cost price for the goods? Yeah. And you said, yeah. Right. Which is nice, and it's nice to be straightforward about it. I However, do want now. are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Because they're not travelling with you, you can't receive any payment for the goods. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So if well, if money is exchanged for these goods, that's not permitted. I'm not selling them. I know, but you're getting the cost price for the goods, aren't you? No. That's what, what you just said. I didn't just said the presents. Right. I asked you a question. I know what you said. You need to remember, you can only bring in tobacco for yourselves. Giving them away as gifts is not a problem. However, 
if you're getting cost price that you paid over there, that's not permitted. Well, I would have brought a lot more than that. Well, it, I don't know that. Like, just remember, so you can't receive any. Just you can't receive I any know. payment. I don't want Do you know? No one's got any money to pay. Finally, the message right. appears to have sunk in. Quickest way out, straight down there to the right, and then left. I asked her if she was receiving any payment for the goods. And she says, uh, yes, she'll be receiving the cost price. She was a bit nervous, perhaps, coming back after such a long flight. Gave her the benefit of the doubt, because after a while, she did change her story. Uh, she seemed happy by my decision. Hopefully, she'll remember not to bring in goods for other people who aren't traveling with her. Back in Gatwick, the animal products team are also dealing with passengers who claim not to understand customs regulations. Many travellers can't resist the temptation of foreign meat products, but if it's non-EU, it's not coming in. What food have you got in your bags? Fish. Fish and... and OK, anything else? Any patties? What flavour are they? Beef, OK. OK, you just have to go with the officer, OK? Put some beef patties on the back okay, of OK, madam, yeah. just come with me. And the dog's indicated, saying you've got some meat products, you've got some beef patties, OK. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to bring any meat products into the UK. No, unfortunately not. It's the same. As from all countries outside of the EU, you're not allowed to bring any meat products. It seems she made the same mistake before. Do you know what? This is, is this new, the patty one? Uh, no. Oh, they should. Oh, well, maybe they haven't looked for patties before, but if you've got the vegetarian ones. Oh, my God, the vegetarian ones all right. Yeah, because no, obviously there's no meat in a vegetarian oh, okay. patty, uh, but anything containing meat's not allowed to be bought in. Pete does his best to clarify the rules. Well, you'll have to bring one fish. Does it say one fish? Um, no, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're allowed to bring in as many fish as you oh, like now. One fish whatever weighs the highest. Yes, so if your fish weighs more than 20 kilograms, oh, yes. you're not allowed to bring it in. That would be a big fish, so you'd have to have a real long suitcase to fit that in. The woman is philosophical about her lost burgers. You can't get them type of patties here. It's only in English patties. They're not really the same. Never mind. Next time I know. <laughs> OK. No more patty. You can't have patty. Look, this is what it says. Beef patty, none. That's what I signed for. Sorry. OK. The woman leaves, marking the end of a busy shift for the meat team. Well, people were smuggling in uh, cheese and patties, which they shouldn't have been, but we've taken them from them. It's a good job we got the dog, cos you can't always find them products without the dog sniffing for them, so it's good. It's a large haul and will be added to the 200,000 kilos of animal products sniffed out by the border officers each year. Further examination of the Venezuelan baseballs found cocaine hidden inside them all with a street value of £10,000. In Gatwick's departure lounge, a passenger has been spotted buying tobacco with other people's boarding cards and UK Border Officer Mike has been called in to investigate. We've had a call from the duty-free shop that have told us that someone has bought a large quantity of cigarettes and tobacco. So what people do is they get a couple of boarding cards or get someone else to buy the goods for them. Apparently, they're sitting in the pub. Anyone flying within the EU has a duty-free allowance of 200 cigarettes, but criminals steal boarding cards to non-EU countries like Turkey and illegally purchase thousands of cigarettes. It's known as carousel fraud. Hey, guys, how are you? But the man realises the game is up. I'm lying, I'm going to Malta, he's got on board with this guy. Have you got a boarding pass for Malta? Yeah. Can I have a look at that? Are you all flying to Malta? No, no he's they are going to Turkey. Oh, OK, can I see all your passports, please? They now need Thank to you. work out who's to blame. No, it's just, no. Well, no, it's just my brass. We got a place out there. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's a deal right there. It's the boy here. I mean, yeah, I know. 
the advent do is they buy it large quantities of cigarettes and then they the they controls but switch all the domestic to it. Oh no no no. So they're rebooking their flights. Yeah. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna definitely need to make sure that you get on your plane with your cigarettes and that you don't just walk out the airport. If you just wait there a bit. But Mike suspects the culprit may have to be arrested. Just need to make sure I leave with it. No, he should be nicked for that. Why should he be nicked for it? Because you're not allowed to buy them going within the EU, even if you're free, because he's taken them EU. We'll seize them and report it, because they fraudulently use these. Hello, can I just run this past you, please? You know we've just been called up to duty-free land. Some geezer has got his mates who are flying to Bodrum to buy him 4,000 fags, um, and he's flying on to Malta. And he's admitted he knows he's done wrong, but they're so expensive out there. He's got to come down, really, isn't he? All three, all three of them, or season report, but it's an absolute offence, isn't it? Because it's a fraudulent. I think he'll need to come down. OK, if you collect your bag. The two passengers flying to Turkey will be allowed to leave, but the carousel fraudster isn't going anywhere. Okay. What you've done so far is an absolute offence, which sorry. means... At the moment, time is 13.25. I'm placing you under arrest on the suspicion of being involved in the fraudulent invasion of excise goods. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm the defence if you do not mention when questioned. Something you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? OK, we're just going to go down to our customs suite now. Am I going to make my flight today? Not looking likely. What we're going to do, though, we're just going to take you downstairs. OK. Um, we may seize the goods from you. We may need to ask you some more okay. questions. At the moment, I can't say whether you will make your flight or not yet. All right, okay. It may seem harsh for a few cigarettes, but the man has attempted to evade hundreds of pounds in tax. And if he's done it before, he may be going to jail. In Manchester, a flight from Paris has just arrived. Border officers have intercepted some suspicious baggage which started its journey in South America. These are the name of Lopez. Border officers are always on the lookout for anything suspicious. And it's the names on these bags that rang alarm bells. It's just the fact that they're, they're two similar cases with two different names, which smugglers have been known to, to use a method which we call the switch bag. They'll have two bags, one with drugs in and one just clean bag, depending on whether they get stopped or not. Depends which one they pick up. The bags go back on the carousel. Yes, then. While Martin keeps watch to see who picks them up. The officers now need to try and communicate with the passengers to find the source of the coke hit. These bags, they belong to you? Yeah? One moment. They're Spanish? No, Chilean. There may be a language barrier, but there's some words the son seems to understand. Cocaine, heroin? No. No. Cocaine, heroin? No. No. The officers decide to swab the son's belongings first. The suspicions about cocaine were correct. But often coke hits can be caused by personal use. And working out the cause here will be easier said than done. Quite high hits of cocaine off the inside the gentleman's bag. Um, Unfortunately, because they're non-English speakers, we can't really question to establish anything about misuse or anything. So, so whether it's a recreational user or not, we can't establish anything at the moment because he can't speak English. In Gatwick, the flight to Malta is about to depart, but one passenger looks increasingly unlikely to be there in time. What Duty Free said is that he Such was going out. He was going out apparently, and just asking to borrow people's boarding cards so that he could buy so yeah. he, he said, lend me your boarding card. And they said, yeah, what? Well, I'll, I'll get you a pint. And that's what he And that's where he's in there. Yeah. Well, that's how it works on the boats going Of course it does. Of course it does. Oh, that's what he's done. He don't know. No way. The cigarettes will definitely be seized. 
but the officers are waiting to hear back from the investigation team to find out if the man is going to be charged. His flight's due at 15.30, departure time. Gate closes at 15.10. Obviously, depending on how official we need to be about it, it's whether or not he misses his flight. Obviously, he's committed an offence, so if he misses his flight, that's his own problem. As the fags get bagged, the news comes in that the man won't want to hear. Unfortunately, I spoke to the investigation team. They do want us to take you down and they'll question you down there, OK? So we'll be moving in a couple of minutes. With the illegal cigarette trade robbing over a billion pounds a year from the Treasury, the man's crime is being taken seriously. Hello, boss. Would you mind doing us a favour? Would you be able to contact British Airways and just say that he won't be making his flight? But it's just so that they don't hold the gate open and keep calling his name if he's not going to make it. All right? All right, lovely stuff. The man is in serious trouble with the law, and his travel plans are in ruins. Now, would you like somebody informed that you have been arrested and that you are here? Um, the thing is, she's in Malta. That's it. They're going to be waiting no for me that end. Doesn't matter where in the world. I mean, they it's are. just I don't want to scare her. I mean, can I speak to her or not? Am you I not? can indeed. Yes. Hello, darling. Is Mummy there a minute? Huh? Is she asleep? Um. All right then. Um. Oh, it's just the flight. There's a problem with the flight. It's. Yeah. Could, I've run a later. The flight's been delayed. Tell Natalie not to leave to the airport until I phone her. There's an engine problem or something. I don't know, but leave, leave Mummy asleep. Don't wake her up. All right then. Bye. Bye. The man is locked up until the investigation officers arrive. They later charged him with evasion of excise duty. And he's now awaiting sentence. Back in Manchester, there's more family problems. Officers are trying to communicate with the family from Chile, whose bags gave large hits for cocaine. Martin decides to play an unusual game of charades to work out if the son has used any drugs whilst abroad. Papa, Mama. Yeah. Who, who's that? Yeah. One, one time. Soon. Days. Yeah. Who's that? Once. Yeah. Under pressure, day, the son admits day, using day, cocaine. Uh, two, three weeks. Two weeks ago. Okay. okay. So it's okay, so it's okay, yeah. Out of earshot of his parents, the son clears up the source of the coke hit. Mama, Papa. And Martin promises to keep the confession under wraps. And knowing the son has used speeds up the search. Trouble with his mummy and daddy, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not with us, but mummy and daddy. It also makes it easier to rule the family out as smugglers. Because the gentlemen have been cooperative with us, the family have been cooperative, there is no need to involve his mother and father. The guys are adults. I also find people more truthful if you take them to one side, out of the presence of their parents. If I'd have managed to, if I if I'd have been able to ask that question directly to his, in front of his parents, I don't think he would have been as honest. I asked him the question, have you used cocaine? He said he had once. I asked him how long ago, he said two to three weeks. And that is borne out by the Thank presence you. of the, the traces in the areas we found. Thank you. Adios. Adios. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Coming up, the cash dog sniffs out a suspect. I was thinking of buying a, a car down there. Car. Yeah. As a customs officer, OK, yeah. I can't always believe what people tell me. At Manchester Airport, a flight has just arrived from Pakistan. Officers are on the lookout for drug smugglers and have pulled over two men for a bag search. Yeah, mate, just bring your bag down here for me. Pakistan is a known source country for heroin, and officers conduct initial swab tests for any traces. There's been a recent surge of heroin seizures coming in from Pakistan. Surprisingly, Officer Gary gets a small hit for cocaine from his passenger's suitcase. Yeah. 
Having got an initial trace, Gary swabs the man's clothes for any further hits. He said he hasn't used for three months, but he, he's a regular user of cocaine, which will be here, which he uses the cocaine because it's not very uh, accessible in, in Pakistan. <laughs> but this time, he gets an even bigger hit for heroin. It's given heroin hits. I need an explanation, basically, from where they're coming from. It could take a while to get to the bottom of this one. In Gatwick's South Terminal, UK border officers are targeting a flight to Jamaica looking for money connected to crime using sniffer dog Toby. Just lower your bag for me. Just a quick customs check. Toby's job is to find large amounts of cash, anything more than a 1,000, and handler Mark will want to investigate further. Hiya. Are you carrying any money with you today? Yeah. How much roughly have with you? Um, it's, uh, I got, I got, I got 10,000 from the bank. Mm -hmm. Which I have. 10,000 pounds. Yeah. It's a lot of cash leaving the country, and Paul will now want some answers. The dog has detected some currency, and you've said you're carrying about 10,000 pounds. Is that, is that all your money? Yeah. Okay. Paul wants to know what the money is for. I was thinking of buying a car down there. The car that you're going to buy. Yeah, do you know what you're going to buy? It's a Honda. A Honda. Yeah. And how much are you going to spend on it? I think about 2,000 or 200. And you've got 10 grand there, though. Yeah, but I'm, I'm... The man's explanation becomes confusing. I support 1.5. I'm back for 1.5. What are you going to do with the rest? You the bag of rest of the money. That's 2,005. <laughs> 2,500. No, the car cost one point four five million. How much are you going to spend on the car? Um, this car, I'm trying to have a forget the right. I'm trying to have a forget the right for one point three, one point four. Say again, say slowly. I'm going to try and get it for like, what, one point three, one point four million. Right, which in, in sterling, in, in English money, how much are you going to pay? That would be like, what, 9,000 or 9,000 yeah. for Honda. Yeah. And how old would that be? Huh? How old would the car be? I think it's um, 2002. And cars in Jamaica are very expensive to buy second hand, aren't they? Yeah. yeah? So you're going to be prepared to spend like 10,000, nearly 10,000 pounds on a 2002 car? Paul thinks the story sounds suspicious. As a customs officer, yeah. I'm interested in, as I said, large amounts of currency that are leaving or entering the UK. You have a substantial amount of cash with you today. OK, that's the reason I'm taking so long yeah, with it. As I said, there's not going to be so much problem. I didn't have to take it with me. Do you have any details of the car that you might want to buy with you? You don't have any. Could you provide those sort of details? Can you provide details of the bank loan to me? I can provide details. Yeah. And the process. Not, not now, this minute. Not now, this minute. Can I just see the money now? I've searched the bags again. Huh? Can I just see the money again, please? That's okay. a different one. What's how many's in here? Um, there is five thousand. And the other one? Five thousand. Let's have a look. And the other? Two bucks. Right? How much have you got together? How much have you got all together? In these? Yeah. Five. Ten thousand all together. Yeah. Okay. What I need to do is to you hold on to your money. Yeah. If you wait there, I've just got to do a couple of checks. Okay? okay. If Paul thinks the cash has criminal connections, it will be seized, and the man's holiday could be over before it's begun. Got seven, they got seven checks in bags, unfortunately, between them all. There's three of them travelling. The 10,000 belongs to the one person. It's from a consolidated loan. There's no documentation regarding the, the money, apart from the envelope it's in from a bank. Um, so it's going to cost me about £500 a month to pay it back yeah, this all, to buy a car in Jamaica. To buy a car? Yeah. So they've got family over there? He's Jamaican. He's oh, he Jamaica. lives there, No, he lives here. He works Why's here he buy a car in because Jamaica? he's over there a lot. With no evidence where the £10,000 came from, Toby may have helped find cash intended for drugs. Have you done a PNC at all? Paul wants to find out if the man has a criminal record, but with the flight now nearly ready to depart, time is running out. How long um, before the gate closes? Well, it's supposed to go at five past. Right. OK, got a few minutes. I don't know, yeah. OK. okay.
Back in Manchester, Officer Gary has found a high trace of heroin from a passenger's clothes who's travelled back from Pakistan. OK, now that, you see me swabbing the inside yeah, of his yeah. shoe and you've seen me swabbing the shoe laces. Yeah. Right, obviously you've had them on your feet. How long have you had them? About, about 48, OK. Anybody else wear them? No, just me. OK. Well, I've just swabbed the inside of them. When you're wearing these, you're going to sweat through your feet and you're going to sweat through your paws and your hands, yeah. right? Yeah, now, I'm getting heroin hits and cocaine hits. Quite a strong heroin hit from yeah. the soles of them shoes. You used to smoke heroin. OK. So while you've been in possession of them shoes, yeah. you've smoked heroin yeah, before and, and cocaine. cocaine. OK. When was the last time you used heroin or cocaine? About two or three months ago. Two or three months yeah. ago. I've been clean up now. You, you're clean up to now. You're registered heroin addict at all, or yeah. you have been, yeah? OK. The man's honesty about personal use explains the hits. But officers have a duty to investigate his belongings further to ensure he's not smuggling drugs into the country. Happy with that, I think. But officers are convinced that he's not drug smuggling and he's free to go. I'm not worried about anything. I'm worried, obviously. I would be worried. I'd be sweating, you know what I mean? So I've got nothing to hide, so I'm all right. In Gatwick, the flight to Jamaica is nearly fully boarded. But the passenger is still waiting to hear if he'll be allowed to leave with his £10,000. Yes. So with your agreement, uh, can I go ahead and seize it? OK, 12.55 for the seizure of the money. It's not good news for the passenger. I'm not satisfied what you've told me regarding the cash. OK, you're telling me it's come from a bank, but I don't know that. It was with your from Barclays Bank. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but listen to me. As a customs officer, OK, I can't always believe what people tell me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a very good customs um, officer, would I? Is there any other way you could, you could prove it without... I can't do it here this morning. I will be holding on to the money today. I will be seizing this cash, this £10,000. You're not under arrest, and you will, you're entitled to leave the UK and go on your holiday to Jamaica today, but you won't be taking the cash with you, OK? It doesn't mean that you won't be getting the cash back at some further stage. At the moment, I'll need to seize it for the purpose of the further investigation. Okay. okay? Will you be travelling on the flight today? Okay. That's fine. He's going to travel, so he doesn't need to offload the bags. Yeah. With just seconds to spare, the officers are now rushing to get the man on board. 12.55. But with 10 grand at stake, he wants to make sure all the paperwork is correct. Do you want to get your flight? Yeah, but then... Right. Uh, You've got a few minutes before the, the gate closes, OK? This is the receipt for the seized cash. That means I am taking £10,000 from you today. Mm -hmm. But could I need further evidence from you to, to tell me where the cash has originated from and what the intended purpose is for? That's the reason I'm seizing mm -hmm. the cash. OK, this is purely this is a receipt. The flight is going in a couple of minutes. Right, we signed it. You really need to move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've said another question now, yeah? What is the difference now if I come to you with two or three credit cards and still say they don't define it? Yeah? Then you'd been all right. A credit card has an audit trail. Cash doesn't. Yeah. That's, that's the problem with yeah, uh, yeah, the cash. If you want to catch your flight, you need to get in the castle, yeah? Everything is as paperwork. So there's no other cash for paperwork. Just, just to go to the airport. I think you just need a passport and don't carry the contraband. Sir, listen. If you want to make your flight, you have to go on now. If you even miss that flight, yeah, I don't even care because the insurance company still have a paper for money. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a last of time. The passenger's not happy, but he's made the flight, and it gives the cash team time to ensure the money doesn't have any links to crime. With cash, he came across as putting um, up front about he was carrying the money, but I'm not satisfied with what the end use of the, ca the, the cash is for, um, with, with particularly with... Um, bringing, uh, I'm not saying this gentleman would be the case, but with drugs. Drugs are so much cheaper to buy qu uh, quantity-wise in Jamaica, and you could buy a lot of uh, drugs for £10,000. I'm not sure that this, this man is totally involved in that, but people do. And obviously, um, if we can take the cash out at the beginning and do further checks, uh, more the better.
The man who was carrying £10,000 in cash returned to the UK two weeks later, but his money remains with the border officers, and the investigation continues. At Manchester Airport, a flight has just arrived from Dubai. Border officers and immigration have stopped a British man who's lost his passport. They've let him into the country, but want customs officers to speak to him. He's turned up without a passport. Um, he came off to Dubai. He's been drinking and he's arrogant, is the word they used. But I'm sure you'll be able to cope with that, 99152. Thank you, Chief. With the man's rather unusual behaviour, border officers in immigration have suggested searching his bags. Didn't seem that drunk. He looks completely out of it. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to go to Salford, you know. You want to go to? Salford. Yes, Salford. Right, well, first of all, you need to get out of here. Do you have anything to, to declare? Do you need to speak? Sorry? I need to speak. No. No. no I Where have you arrived from? I come from Daha. Right. Yeah. Officers take the man aside for further questioning. Where did you lose your passport? In the, in the airport. In the airport in Dubai? No, Dubai, oh, I don't know where. You don't know where you've lost it? Well, I did have it with me. No, I, I don't know why. Is it a British passport? Yeah, I didn't. Sure. Right. Well, I'm going to look inside your bags and I'm going to ask you some questions. Are these all your bags here? This one, this one, this one. Yeah, did you pack them yourself? What? Did you pack them all yourself? Yeah, yeah. I... Do you know what's inside the bags? Yeah, yeah. Has anyone given you anything to carry? Anything. No, nothing too bad to pack. Well, OK. Yeah. Have you had a few drinks on the plane? Yeah, one or two. One or two. Aye. All right. Okay, that explains a few things. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar. All right. What do you do? Do you work here, or are you a student? No, I'm no student. Nothing. I just I'm, my family here. Right. I just see my family. Right. Where is your home? No. Flatly. 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 Like Michael Flatley. <laughs> no, it's called Fatley. Fatley? Yeah. He, where, where, which country is that? It's in Bangladesh. Right. In Bangladesh. I, so you, I, your home is in Bangladesh. No, my, my, my home is in England. Yeah, yeah, where, just, uh, where in England is your home? Well, my sister. Right. Right. I just, my family, my mom. You went to Bangladesh to visit your family. Oh, and I, how long have you been away? How long? I mean, for four weeks. Four weeks. No, no, I mean four months. Four months? Four months, yeah. So how long? It's a long time. Yeah, quite long. But what my colleague asked was... Right. Do you work in, yeah, yeah, in Manchester? Catering. Yeah, catering. Catering? Yeah. Aye. Catering, yeah. Catering, yeah. Even the simplest question seems too much for this passenger. It could be a long afternoon for the officers. At Gatwick Airport, a plane has just arrived from Nigeria. East Africa is a known source for Class A drug smuggling, and it's up to the UK border officers to stop and question any suspicious passengers. Can you put your bags on the bench for me, sir, please? Right. I'll just ask you a few questions first of all. OK, so you started your journey in Nigeria, is that right? Goodbye to the UK. Right, OK. And how long will you stay in England for? I'm leaving at 7 p.m. this evening, 7 or 5. OK, and where are you flying on to? Netherlands, Amsterdam. OK, and what's the reason for your trip to Amsterdam? A vacation, I'm on vacation, I'm just travelling through Europe. Do you have friends or family in Amsterdam? No, I've got a reservation. And you're not travelling with anybody else? Just me. I'm OK, honest. what's your occupation in Nigeria? IT consultant, I used to live in the US. So from Amsterdam then, where are you going? Zurich. You're going to Zurich? OK, so how how long will you stay in Amsterdam for? Just one day. And then you'll fly on to Zurich? Yes, and I take a train back to London. How long will you stay in Zurich for? One day. I'm just travelling to Europe, that's it. Hazel is alerted by the man's whistle-stop tour of Europe. Her suspicions are heightened when she finds a cheque for a substantial amount of money. 
So who's Alex? A friend of mine. And is this 16,000 American dollars? That's right. OK, why, why are you writing him a cheque for 16,000 American dollars? Because um, I owe him the money and um, he's in the US and I'm just mailing it from here to him in the US. Hazel's not satisfied by the man's explanation, so the officers swap his suitcase for drugs. There we go. It won't be one minute, OK, sir? Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to see if there's been any contact with controlled drugs. The one that this machine tests for is cocaine or heroin. So there's a reading come up, um, a middle size or a medium reading for contact with both cocaine and heroin. Okay, so there was a 0.51 reading for contact with cocaine, yellow, so me me medium size, middle sure. size. Okay. Hazel confronts the man with the evidence. The machine we have tests for traces of drugs, and what he just told me is that there was a background trace for cocaine. I've never used cocaine before. Have you ever been near any drugs or...? No? touched it. OK. The man is adamant, but Hazel can't rule him out as a smuggler just yet. He's got really hardly any luggage. His trip is for seven days. Yeah. Have we ever had swallowers that have come in off the Dubai? We have, haven't we? We have, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to take this further, because I'm not, I'm not happy with him at all. I'll yeah. get permission for a search, I think, and then put him through the body scan. In Manchester, officers are still trying to get some sense out of the inebriated passenger. OK, what's this, then? This one? You no, know, nothing bad one. You All take right. your money. It's all your money. You take it. All right. You're happy. You know, I'm not the money. It's nothing bad. Fruit? Yeah, fruit. Yeah, I use fruit, yeah. Right, you know, you have too many cigarettes. Do you know that? Too many cigarettes? Yeah. No, only three packs. You're not allowed three packets, you're allowed an allowance of 200. I don't know, this is my first time, I, I right. swear to God, I don't know. This is my first time anyway. OK. The officers are used to dealing with all kinds and are satisfied this man has just had a bit too much to drink. Then, I... <laughs> I think because you've drunk too much. No, 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 I'm... A... I see, think, no... You see, you... it does make me, give me a hard time. Right. I've never been, it's never, if I'm drunk, obviously, it's something bad. But right, no, listen, bad to listen, me. And I, why should... listen to what I'm saying. Okay, but... You've lost your passport, so you might lose these cigarettes, so I'm yeah. sticking them in here, OK? okay I'm fucked up. Yeah. Don't lose that. I never Because that's all you've got left, no. ID-wise. Put it in your pocket. I, but you're younger than me, but... I'm you younger than you. Give me a good lesson. And, and I'm I never younger forget. than you. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> I'm younger than you. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The man is keen to explain how and why he lost his passport. I have a nice flight, I have a passport, and um, I can't understand why. I have a passport with me, and someone say, oh, I lost my passport, this, that, that, and the passport is gone. So that makes me uh, very bad. In the plane, they have drink. Obviously, I have a good time in the nice flying, you know. Happy that he's heeded their warning, officers send him on his way. Thanks. All right. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. To the left, right. to the left, left, right. and then right. Yeah. Left and then right. Okay. Okay. Oh, watch yourself. <laughs> He'd had a bit of drink, but he was a nice fella, I think. He had a bit of fruit um, and uh, a few ciggies too many. I just hope he finds his way home. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye. At Gatwick Airport, Hazel's still trying to verify the Nigerian man's story to work out why he's travelling with a cheque for thousands of dollars. And what is it you owe this man the $16,000 for? It's money he gave to me. is in the US. I'm sending it back. Because I'm not travelling to the US, I said, while well, I'm in the UK, I'll get a stamp, put it on it, and mail it to the US. But why did you borrow the money from him? Yeah, I'm a businessman. I just started my business. I need people to give me money to run my business. I'm not completely happy with what he's telling me. And whether all this is just a, a smokescreen for the fact that he's bringing drugs here and he could have booked it and then cancelled it when he gets back, I don't know. Yeah. He's been very cooperative so far. I think he's likely to agree to a body scan. Um, so if you're happy, I'd just like to put him through the machine. 
OK, sir. Um, what I want to do, we've got one last thing we can do. That's OK. OK. Um, and that is to just give you a quick X-ray. The man is put through an X-ray to reveal whether he swallowed any packages. <laughs> On examination of the images, it's clear the man has nothing inside him. OK, that's fine, sir. Thank you very much for your time and your cooperation. Despite the indicators, the man is innocent and free to go. And thanks to his cooperation, he leaves with plenty of time to catch his connecting flight. Coming up, Gary questions a man on a student visa. Spent some time, just make that up now. And something doesn't add up. At Gatwick Airport, it's rush hour as scores of holidaymakers arrive back from outside the EU. Husband and wife officers Paul and Hazel are bracing themselves for a busy night. Hello, where have you just arrived from? Uh, Turkey. Cigarettes will be their main aim as they look to intercept passengers carrying more than 200. <laughs> Do you have anything in excess of your duty-free allowance? 1,800 bag. Right, OK, you can only bring 200 back each. And am I going to guess right in saying you've got more cigarettes than that one as well? See, you could do my job, thank you. Is there another one? Thank you. OK, I don't think I need to tell you, you know you're in the wrong. Yeah. If you're found to be in possession of excess revenue goods again, you could end up being prosecuted. The tobacco seizures are already mounting up. The next flight in is from Moldova, and Hazel and Paul want to examine the bags before the passengers pick them up. On this flight, it's um, been known that people bring in quite a lot of cigarettes. What's happened is there's only 27 passengers on this flight, so the bags have all been delivered, um, but there's no passengers in the reclaim at the moment. So the bags will be coming round again, so we'll have a second shot just to have a look at them outside. It doesn't take long for Paul and Hazel to spot some dodgy bags, and Sarah finds some sneakily hidden cigarettes. A few cigarettes. Obviously, you can see a couple of cartons here inside the suitcase, but there's also a few that I can feel under the lining here. Just have a look in there. There's a few cigarettes under there. Uh, and also, in an effort to try and hide them, there's actually some that I can feel in the bottom of here. These are, I'll just hold them, a pair of uh, waterproof trousers. Paul heads back out to wait for the passenger to claim the bag with the green trousers. Hello. Hello. Yes. Where have you arrived from? From Republic of Moldova. Moldova? Okay, if you'd like to bring your bags in. Paul reminds the man about the rules. There's allowances with regard to cigarettes yeah. and tobacco. Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you understand it? And what do you understand those allowances to be? I don't know. You don't know? So it's 200 cigarettes. But Paul knows he's got a lot more than 200. Okay, so you've got 600 there, which is three times what you're allowed. Yes? It's three times what you're allowed for 600 cigarettes, yes? Yeah. Do you understand that? Yeah. So you're over by three. Yes? All three way. times. Three times the allowance, yes? Yeah. Have you got any other cigarettes or tobacco in here? Yeah, a good couple of more. Couple more what? Cigarettes. Yeah, but how many? Just two. Just those? Yeah, maybe more. Maybe more? Yeah. Well, why don't you tell me how many? I don't know exactly. I, I bring this souvenir from my friend. As a souvenir? Yes. I've never heard of a cigarette called a souvenir before. They asked me for cigarettes. So how many cigarettes have you got in total? Maybe... I've got here cigarettes. And you've hidden them inside yeah. the case? Why have yes. you hidden them in the case? They told me. They told you to hide them? Why? Because you're not allowed to bring them? Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you don't know. OK. The man's being evasive, and he's yet to mention the cigarettes hidden in the waders. At Manchester Airport, a flight has just arrived from Pakistan. It's from outside the EU, so passengers here are also limited to just 200 cigarettes. But the X-ray identifies a pink box, which officers suspect is well over the allowance. Before I even put it through, I thought the weight for the size is right as well, and the, um, the density is right. Right, let's go. The box is put back on the belt, and Officer Ass heads out to the reclaim area to see who picks it up. Well, I'm going to throw your bags, OK? I'm going 
going to x-ray your bags. So this way. Are you traveling alone? Yeah. And where is it you're traveling from? A young man traveling by himself has claimed the box, and Az takes him in for further questioning. That's bad news. Do you know what your allowance for cigarettes are? It's 200. 200 cigarettes, one sleeve of cigarettes. How many do you have? Nine. How many? Nine. Nine sleeves. OK. I'm going to look inside all these bags now, OK? You still sticking with nine? All right, could you open this for me, please? Having seen the x-ray for himself, as knows he's carrying a lot more than nine sleeves. Six and a half. Oh, so there's more than nine? Yeah. Why didn't you say that right from the start? The man realizes he's busted. I'm going to seize these cigarettes because you're well over your allowance. That's all you're allowed. If you bring anything like this in, you need to declare them. You need to let the customs officer know that you've got more than 200. But the 10,000 cigarettes will be seized, and he won't be selling them illegally on the UK black market. money off you there. Who did? As a matter of interest, how much did you pay for these? For, for like... For all of them in the past. No, just for what? Two pound. Two pound. You would have sold that for about... 30? Yeah. Very easily. But not this time. The man leaves without his cigarettes, which will now be destroyed. Meanwhile, another passenger from Pakistan has been brought down by immigration officers. They suspect he's breached his student visa by working when he should have been studying. Apparently, the university or college papers that he's given to the officers, he thinks a little bit dodgy, so the immigration officer just has to go in the bags to see if there's any other doc documentation that backs his story up, basically. Almost immediately, Gary finds the man's UK lorry driving license. Unusual paperwork for a student. Have you had a license for a large goods vehicle? Do you drive for someone? No? Well, we all like big lorries, don't we? But I don't necessarily want to pass the test. So why would you want to pass the test for? No, I understand that. But why would you want to learn to drive a big lorry in the UK unless you were working for somebody? Convinced he's been working, Gary presses the man for details of his alleged university. So in this college, what's the name of the college? Oxford. And how many people go to that college? 25, you just make that up then. What's the names of the people, of the people in the class? Roll me five off, starting now. Louis, Celeste, Sam, three, and Nate. Go away, you're making this up. I'm going to give you five quicker names. If the man wants to convince Gary, his answers will have to be better than that. Gatwick. Officer Paul is still talking to the man from Moldova who's hidden cigarettes in his waterproof trousers. Basically, you get a 200 cigarette allowance. Once you go over that allowance, you forfeit that allowance. So all the items that you brought in today are going to be seized, yeah? You understand that, and I think you knew it before, didn't you? That's why they were hidden. Yeah, they thought me. As Paul finishes up his search of the man's bags, Officer Sarah takes him aside for a quick word. What's up? Um, if you check the feet of those very large waterproof trousers, there's some in the feet. Oh, is it? The ones in the red bag. Cheeky. Check the other one. I think there might be another one in there. Pop that one back up. Pop that one back up. Bring it back up. Have you got cigarettes in the bottom of these? I, I don't know. You do know, don't you? Because yeah. you did it. So bring the other pair out. This? this yes, one. yes, yes. Now, you knew they were in there and you saw me put them back, um, but you still didn't tell me, did you? I, I don't remember. I think you do remember quite clearly. Oh, my Paul is far from impressed that the man has tried to deceive him. Hidden in the two pairs of trousers are over 200 cigarettes. Now, 
Is there anything else you want to tell me about? No. No? That's it, is it? Check again. It would have been just better yeah, if you'd have been honest with me yeah, at the beginning, yes? In all, the man was trying to smuggle almost 3,000 cigarettes. Yeah, I, I have to say, I don't know, I've never seen cigarettes packed like this before. This is the first time for me. He'd um, hidden them on advice from his friends. Uh, but I think he totally knew why he was hiding them. Your passport and you're free to go. Okay. Back in Manchester, Gary's team have almost finished searching the man suspected of breaching his student visa. I mean, this just looks like a photocopy of something that's been made up. It doesn't even look convincing, does it? And it doesn't look good. Do you think he'll get landed? Probably temporary admission to come back tomorrow with the rest of the proof that he's been studying. And if he thinks you're onto him, he just wouldn't come back. Well, then. I know, exactly. And the fact that there's, there's information in his bag about he's taken uh, a HGV course in driving suggests to me that he's obviously possibly could be working. Gary then finds some suspicious credit cards that cast further doubt on the man's credibility. It's all a bit strange, but it's not a customs issue. But the search has found no evidence of drugs, so the man is taken back up to the immigration area. He'll be given 24 hours to prove that he's returned to the UK to study, or he'll be removed. The next day, the man suspected of breaching his visa by working in the UK returned voluntarily to Pakistan. In Gatwick's South Terminal, sniffer dog Badger is examining baggage arriving from the Caribbean. Customs dogs are possibly the most powerful tool in the fight against drugs, and all have their own skills. Badger is known as a cocaine specialist. He gives a clear indication on this black suitcase. The case is put back on the carousel and kept under surveillance. Whoever picks it up will then be stopped and searched to see if Badger's right. A passenger collects the suspect bag and then attempts to pass through the controls. But customs officer Phil is waiting for her. Hello there. Hi. Where are you just arrived from? I'm chatting with you. Are you by yourself? Yeah. Could you come to a bench for us, please? It's good to come up to this one here for us. Thanks very much. You have a passport, you please. Now, quick look. Right, are these all your bags here? Did you pack them all yourself? Yes. And do you know what's inside all of them? No, I've got them close. Just close? Have you been, have you been forced or threatened to bring anything into the UK? And do you understand the controlled drugs, firearms, they're illegal to bring into the UK? Let's have a quick look. You got the keys? Yes. Phil checks to see which is the suspect case and then asks the nervous passenger to open it. OK, I'm just going to put this one for extra machine as well, OK? Phil can't see anything yet, but an X-ray shows what looks like organic material in the wall of the case. So that's probably what we're looking for. I'll do it. I'll quickly go and do this. Quickly go and spike it. Just make sure. <laughs> Phil finds a white powder, which he tests yeah. to see if it is cocaine. Let me just see. The speed of the reaction indicates the quality of the drugs. <laughs> It's actually not reacting. Uh, it's gone, it's gone now. Look, it's, oh, obviously, sort of. uh, it's obviously not very good quality. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were hoping for, but a bit, uh, a bit quicker and a bit more. The purity is low, but Badger's legendary nose for cocaine has sniffed out another smuggler. Okay. Okay, the time is 07:32, and I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. Do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence. Do not mention when questioned something which later on in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. The woman's face says it all. 
bootleggers use ferries to bring in large quantities of tobacco, and officers are cracking down on so-called backy buses. Amongst all the innocent travelers, a passenger's offered a free trip away by bootleggers, as long as they agree to carry back the guideline allowance of tobacco, which the organizers then collect and sell on the black market. Did either of you purchase or obtain anything while you were away? I just got a hundred cities. A hundred? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I got you? some tobacco. Yeah, how much have you got? Um, 20. 20 what? 20 packs of 10. Right, OK. Can I ask you just to pop with them? Yeah. That yeah. officer just to have a quick look at your bags. This passenger has 10 kilos of tobacco worth nearly £2,000. Now it's up to the officers to find out if it's for her own use. If not, it will be seized. In Bristol, dozens of flights a day arrive from outside the EU. Officers target these flights to make sure no one brings in more than their allowance of 200 cigarettes to sell on the UK's black market. Usually bags are x-rayed to catch the bootleggers in the act, but today a passenger hurrying through the customs channel alerts Jane, who pulls him in for a chat in the search bay. Have you got any cigarettes? No. None at all? No? Can you just get that one up on the bench and I'll just have a quick look in it, please? Well, I won't walk away yeah, now. Just take you have got yes, cigarettes. Have, yes. What? Can you just get that up there? The initial lie didn't work, and it's closely followed by another. It's only that one I've got. Right, OK. But Jane's having none of it. Can you get the other case just up on that bench and open it up for me? Both bags are full of Turkish cigarettes, and the passenger is full of lies. Have you got any in your hand luggage? Yeah, yeah. yeah. all right. Take care of it. Yeah. Well, you are, yeah. We're not under arrest, so... No. No. What? Can walk away. Well, we'll do you some paperwork. You are obviously over the allowance, so well, they no, are, are going to be seen. Obviously, it's not against the law to do it. Well, what I'm going to do is do you some paperwork. The goods will be seized and destroyed. And if he's had goods seized before, he may face a fine or a prison sentence. In Portsmouth, Nikki's now questioning the ferry passenger carrying 10 kilos of tobacco to work out if she may be carrying it for someone else. How many times have you been on previously? Um, I was here last month. Last month? Uh, no, sorry, September. OK. The second. Right. And how many times have you travelled on the Bilbao this year? Uh, about three. About three times? Yeah. OK. Have you been stopped by customs before? No. No. A few simple checks tells Nikki that this passenger is also telling lies. She so normally brings in three kilos and a full quantity of cigarettes as well. Then done that. That was back then. Just see if she's been jobbed before. That's so as well. She's a well-stopped customer. <laughs> Lying to a customs officer isn't a good idea, especially if you want to keep your tobacco. But Nikki suspects she's carrying it as part of an organised backy bus. Some of these are for you, some of your family? Yeah. OK. And how much money have they given you towards their contribution towards the goods? They, they haven't really given me anything because I'll give them gifts, you know, Christmas. Right, OK, so you don't expect to get receive any payment of any no. sort for these goods? No. How much should they cost you? Um, £340. £340 for all of it? Yeah, yeah. Right, OK. okay. It turns out the woman's travelling on a coach known to customs as one of their regular backy buses. The passenger is offered an interview, but she decides to give up. Yeah. OK, you're not under arrest. I'll leave the stuff. Have you got the passport? Because there's other yeah. people waiting to go home, you know what I mean? OK, so you don't want... Do you want me to detain the goods or do you just want to abandon them? Just abandon them. Just, just abandon the them. Passport, yeah. OK, so you don't want to stay for interview and you do not want me to detain your goods? I need to goods. get home. My father needs me and there's people waiting on the coach. OK, so you just want to leave your goods and walk away? Yeah, yeah. OK. Knowing that organisers of backy buses tell their carriers to abandon their goods in case they give too much away in interview convinces Nikki she's done the right thing, but the woman insists she's done nothing wrong. It's over. We're not doing no drugs or nothing. You know what I mean? You should be looking after worse crim. You know, I'm not a criminal, but. You should be looking more to criminals, shouldn't they? Thank There's you. Your passport's back. She has been stopped by customs before, even though she claims that she hadn't. Um, I was not happy in my own mind to let her proceed with the goods unless I knew they were for her own personal use, and on this occasion, I don't believe they were. 
Back in Bristol, Jane's waiting for the results of background checks on the man caught with 11,000 Turkish cigarettes. Have you ever been stopped by customs before? Never? No, I've never been stopped. So if I check the records now, I'm yeah. not... No. The checks reveal this to be yet another lie. Just a record to see if he's um, had anything seized from him before, or if she's had anything seized from him before. I don't think he has, but he's been stopped before, and he's been issued with a notice one. He said to me initially, I said, have you got cigarettes? He went, no. I said, well, I'm going to look in your bags. And he said, oh, they're full. Oh, right. And he said that he knows. OK. So I'll just uh, get rid of him, I think. The man has been stopped before, but it's his first seizure, so escapes are fine. Although he's lost the cigarettes, which will be added to the billions taken off the black market by customs each year. You could tell that this was for resale because of all the different, different brands. Different brands, yeah. yeah. And there was no luggage. No. And they were both trying to race through without getting eye contact with anyone. And that was why I went after him, because I think he was trying to get out quite quickly. Meanwhile, the woman in Gatwick South Terminal won't be leaving just yet. Well, just leave that there. Just come round here. You can take a seat on the far side, please. OK, do you understand why you've been arrested? No. Okay, we found what we believe to be a controlled drug in your bag. She's okay, keeping she quiet. Okay. Not surprising, as there's around a kilo of pure cocaine in her suitcase. She's all the way around the bag. You can feel it as well, how thick it is. Good job. Mm. The woman's taken to the custody cells for questioning. If found guilty, she could be facing a long prison sentence. The drugs worth nearly £50,000 have been taken off the streets, and it's all thanks to Badger. There's always that time between the indication when they actually find it. Sometimes it can be up to sort of quarter of an hour before they actually give you the thumbs up there's something there. That's a bit of a worrying time. But um, with that indication, more or less knew there was something there straight away. So the UK's airports are where customs make most Class A seizures. Today in Gatwick, officers are waiting for targets suspected of bringing in cocaine from Trinidad. The two women could be the first cocaine job ever for new officer Mark. Nervous because the rest of the team are all going, this is it, this is a job. They've, they've definitely got it. So I'm nervous. Really trying not to be. Two drug couriers carrying three kilos of cocaine were found on this flight yesterday. These two women were meant to be on that flight and their highly excitable behaviour is raising suspicions further. Thank you. Okay, has anybody asked you to bring anything back for them? Not this time. <laughs> not this time? No, not this time. We were too naughty to do it this time. OK. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, is it back to work then on Monday? No, children, we're housewives. Yeah. A lot of um, small housewives, yeah. <laughs> Oh. Obviously, you just flying out somewhere very nice and. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, that was horrible. So, oh, was it? Yeah, it was They're very so rough horrible. And, rude. and then and dogs are treated like rats. And we could be kidnapped. We had to be, had to be escorted everywhere we went. Right. Went in. Went in. Okay. <laughs> um, so, this is going to sound a silly question, but so obviously the tickets for getting out there and staying out there could be quite expensive. How did you how did you pay for your tickets? Somebody paid us then. All oh, right, that was that was nice. Then who who was that then? Was that? Um, <laughs> that, 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 that was my nice swim. Why, why, why did he do that? He's got quite a lot of money, to be honest with you. Their behaviour and their story convince Mark that he's about to get his first cocaine seizure, but the first swab shows no trace. Completely clear. Chris joins Mark to dig a little deeper. Hello. Hello. Oh. oh, really? Right, now, do you need a hand? Yeah, would you like to get my one? Actually, if you'd, uh, you've just taken the words out of my Or do you want me to uh, Or if you want to this pop this you. through, oh, just... Yeah. yeah, well, it was just... Oh, yes. Oh, how exciting. Not as exciting as it sounds. I'd like an X-ray while I'm here. Um, yeah, well, we, we could actually arrange that, if you wish. Can I have an X-ray? We'll, uh, but not, not just yet. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that... We'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge in OK, yeah. that looks about done. Yeah. 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 OK, I'll take yeah. this one away. Yeah, it, yeah don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll get that sorted. Can I come with you? What do you mean that? 
that is obviously there's uh, there's something not think. quite right there yeah. the, the, the fact is it's not opening and closing no, properly which anyway. to me is uh, a yeah. bit, bit oh, suspicious right. it's a little bit heavy at the bottom here I'll just have a quick look where are you taking it Michael I'm sure he'll be as gentle as he can The bags are clean, but with so much to gain from smuggling, sometimes couriers carry drugs inside their bodies. We'll go for a strip search, probably, rather than... What I'm about to do, I'm going to go and speak to a colleague, um, because I'm going to ask for to, somebody to do a, a search of person. Search of Yeah, bec because of... I, well, that's not something that we can know. It would just be a visual... Uh, it would be a visual inspection. Well, because of... Where you've come from? Oh, no, well, hang, hang on, hang on, just a second. Hang, sorry, hang on, just a second. Where you've come from? Uh, you, you've both said to me, obviously, uh, your housewives, you, you don't have the money. Obviously, you said Uncle Tony's yeah, pay for it. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's absolutely fine. But obviously, we come across people that don't have money that other people pay to go out and bring drugs in. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's something that we need to check. Yeah. They're not happy, but a body search will find the truth. The so quicker I go, the quicker it gets done. All right? Officers aboard the cutters protect our coastline against drug smugglers, who are a constant but invisible threat. These high-powered ships operate in all weathers, but in September 2000, a storm off the coast of Cornwall drove them back into Falmouth in search of shelter. Always on the lookout for suspicious activity, they noticed another vessel taking refuge from the heavy seas. The vessel, rather than coming into Falmouth, it turned and went to the other side of Carrick Roads, which is into a small harbour, which is actually St Moors. The officers thought it was a local, but then watched as it tied up in a dangerous position. As the tide started to go out, they realised that this mooring was actually on a mud bank or a sand bank, and the yacht was actually settling and starting to tip. Always ready to respond to a fellow sailor in need, the cutter decided to help. So they launched their onboard uh, rigid inflatable, their rib, motored across into St Moore's Harbour, went to the vessel and challenged it. The officers had come to help, but the man on board was a smuggler who made a startling confession. And as they stepped aboard, uh, he turned around to them and said, oh, right, well, OK, the game's up, there's six tonnes on board. The officer's act of charity had paid dividends. They were completely flabbergasted. The first reaction was, well, what do we do now? And then somebody managed to sort of, well, I better get a notebook out and make a note of this, because effectively I've got a confession already before we go to court, at which point they arrested him. The skipper was John Moore. He led them into the cabin to see the drugs for themselves. There were bales of cannabis, uh, literally in every available space within the vessel. They also found evidence he wasn't working alone. But two passports were actually found on the vessel. So they decided that the best thing to do was to remove him from the vessel. Three of the cutter crew stayed on board the catch and wait and see if the crew came back in the morning. Moore's accomplices did return right into the trap. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. Two men jumped into the cockpit of the yacht and basically the cutter crew arrested them there and then. The accomplices, Craig and Needham, joined their skipper at the police station, where Moore's frank confessions continued. And he was presented to the custody sergeant. He was then asked, what's your occupation? To which he replied, I'm a drug smuggler. This time, however, he'd failed. On the day of the trial, all three pleaded guilty to their part in the crime. Mr. Moore was subsequently sentenced to 10 years imprisonment, Mr. Needham to four years imprisonment, and Mr. Craig to five years imprisonment. Three more criminals were behind bars, thanks to the keen eyes of the officers and a stroke of luck. The street value at that time was estimated to be in the region of 14 and a half million pounds. At the end of the day, the vessel being forced into Falmouth was 
really the only reason that we were able to intercept this load. Without that, it's very unlikely anybody would have known that this consignment of drugs was on its way. Back in Gatwick's north terminal, Mark is still hoping to find his first drug smuggler. His two female suspects are about to be searched. So far, they've cooperated, but the daughter is getting angry. The, the search, no, 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 no. the search, um, yeah, um, yeah, obviously I can... We're going to have a search. As soon as we've had that shirt search, I think we should be able to leave. We've got children to get back to. You're delaying us for no reason. You, once you've searched us, you know we have nothing on us, so why are we still held in your custody? Their story suggests they're carrying drugs, and Mark waits expectantly outside for the results. Bend over slightly, no, slightly, that's right, and, and part the cheeks of your bottom. The strip search finds nothing, but Mark refuses to give up just yet. A pair of shoes from the lady that we've just searched. Um, I'm going to swap them with our tool that checks for drugs, as it can be an indication that they've swallowed drugs. So I shall do that with a result. A small indication. The indication means Mark wants to do a body scan. 0.5, something to think about. With these indications, keen to go for a, an X-ray, which the mum has, has already sort of informally said she's happy to do. What about the daughter, in terms of X-ray? Do you think she'll be happy to do she's that? She's not happy to be here at the moment. If you don't think they're going to stay, you're going to have to look at arresting them. Would... Worried about the daughter's reaction to the X-ray, they decide to arrest them. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved with the importation of a controlled drug. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. I hope that wants to go first, then. Let's get moving. The daughter agrees to be x-rayed first. In just a few seconds, Mark will know if they've swallowed packages of cocaine. Against the odds, both scans are clear. And Mark admits that this won't be his first Class A drug bust. 7.58, you're unarrested. Thank you very much. Mark and the ladies part as friends. And you're glad we weren't smugglers, aren't you? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Why no? Because I haven't had my first... Catch of the day. Exactly. Well, I haven't had, well, I'm still fairly new at this, and I haven't had my first successful job yet. Not that I'm wishing you particularly were a drug smuggler, but... You know. but, um, and we do understand drugs is very bad in England and we would not contribute to bringing in drugs because my husband died of a heroin overdose, my brother died of a heroin overdose, so I do understand drugs do not need to be in this country. I've got four children who I don't want on drugs, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm anti-drugs and got I understand now. why you have to do this, you know what I mean? And all, for, all good on them, all good on them, yeah. <laughs> The cocaine smuggler from the South Terminal was charged with attempting to import 873 grams of cocaine. She pleaded guilty and was sentenced to six years in prison. It's early morning rush hour, with dozens of flights arriving into Gatwick from Africa and the Caribbean, source areas for Class A drugs. Customs officers are on high alert, searching passengers who fit profiles associated with smugglers. I've just x-rayed a passenger's bag and you can see there's clearly two uh, rectangular shapes there. So I'm just going to cut the bag open and have a further inspection of what those shapes are. The passenger told immigration he has no money, will be staying in Britain for two months, and a friend has agreed to pay all his expenses. It's a story Mike has heard many times before from drug couriers. It's well concealed, but Mike thinks he's found a large quantity of cocaine built into the case. There it is. There's a white paste in there. The paste tests positive for cocaine. So, good result. Let's go, Nick. 10.55, yeah? So, I've conducted a test on the bottom of your suitcase, which has showed a white paste. I've got a white paste. 
It's yep, I've conducted a test on it which says it's cocaine. Theref yep. Cocaine, therefore the time is 10.55. Mm. I'm placing you under arrest on the suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. OK, if you could follow this officer, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. OK. Sorry? Right, well, that's all going to be discussed with you later. I will remind you that everything you say will be noted down now, OK? The attempted importation has failed. Sit on that seat there for me, please. And it was a long way from being the perfect crime. He's got a really duff invitation letter. The grammar of it was awful. Um, there was capital letters mid-sentence. It wasn't very good at all. There was also a signature on the bottom of the invitation letter. And the writing was very, very similar. So I assume that it was written by him himself. It's a serious crime carrying a maximum of 15 years. Underpants down. OK, up. The officers want to find out if anyone else is involved, and the investigations could take some time. Yeah, so that, um, we'll just nick someone, so there's a good chance I'll be late. The man initially observes his right to silence, but he soon starts giving information about possible accomplices. Okay, what is the name of the person that's meeting you here today? Yeah, very. Okay, and what does he look like? Right. Okay, how tall or small? About five foot ten. Long hair, short hair? Bald head. Like mine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mike decides to put out an announcement for the man to come to the information desk to see if they can catch him too. About 34. Bald head. Bald head. About 5 foot 10. About 5 foot 10. If he's involved, it's unlikely he'll fall for the trap, but it's worth a try. In Portsmouth, officers are hunting a possible target vehicle picked out by the intelligence hub. Unfortunately, it's, it's a bit difficult to actually say whether it's going to be um, cocaine or heroin or cannabis. What tends to flag more than a specific type of commodity is criminality or suspicion. And from that, you tend to get a job that will fall into one of those categories. Um, it could be, particularly at this time of year with stuff coming up from Africa, it could be anything as, as bizarre as tortoises. Drug smugglers are adept at seeming normal. So it's Richard's job to hunt for the incriminating details. You mentioned about the car, so can you tell me what the situation is with the car, please? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Right. I might keep the car here and I might take it back, I don't know. So you bought it when you were in Libya? Yes, I did. It's yeah. your own car. OK, how long have you been... A, where do you normally live, please? In England. So how long have you been away for? Uh, two months. Two months. Yeah. And that's your return ticket there, is it? Can I just have a quick look at that, please? This is a one-way ticket. Yeah. This is a no, this is the ticket you obviously got for this trip. Yeah. Okay. When did you book the ticket, the, the trip, return trip back? How long ago did you book uh, it? Did you book it when you got to La Havre today? I did. Yes. Okay. And what's been the purpose of your two months away? Um, I went for uh, Ramadan month. Yes. The fast month to Libya. Okay. And then I uh, waited for the car, and uh, basically I waited for the car to um, be ready. Then I came in the car. The long trip and one-way ticket are both reasons to investigate further. And the suspiciously clean interior also makes Richard think the car may have something to hide. I can prove that you can flew over there. Let's walk the car. Um, it's not a new car, a second-hand car. Middle bought from a dealer, he says. It's a second-hand car? That's, that's what, what he says. It's got the shrink wrap on it, that's what I thought. And that's what he says. He says it's not a brand-new car, but he said he has bought it from a dealer. Um, so I think it's worth it because he's just, you know, Push the car in Tripoli, which is not something that we normally get here, is it? So I think it's it. worth looking at. Richard must now tell the man his new car is going to be searched in the specialist rummage bay. We've got a ramp here, we're going to put on the ramp just so we can look over it more thoroughly than we could do here. We have a waiting room that you can sit in there if you wish to keep warm. Um, yeah. Just to let you know what the situation is. Okay. We're obviously dealing with this. Hopefully, as soon as we can, it's not going to take a long time. Can I just put my clothes back in? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, so, um, do you want me to take the car out while I do this, or...? No, no, uh, no, you put the... The driver could the be annoyed first. because he has something to hide, but perhaps he's just nervous about having his new car pulled apart. The 
the smuggler caught in Gatwick is now being transferred to the custody cells, where the reality is beginning to sink in. You just stand in front of that desk for me. Hello there. Is there anybody that you want to telling, a friend or family that may be meeting you or worried where you are? I would like to call, I would like to let me away from The man is locked up, while the officers out back work out how much he'll be charged with trying to smuggle. As you saw on the x-ray, there was two of these. Um, from what we've got here, we've estimated that the total amount of cocaine could be two kilos, which has a street value of about £100,000. And in the terminal, the person meeting him has answered the announcement and has been arrested. The poorly planned crime has gone wrong on every level. Do you handcuff, Perry? We've gone to the information desk in the North Terminal um, where we've put out a call for the person meeting the courier today and a gentleman has come forward and said that he was here to meet him. We've subsequently arrested him and he's been brought here today to the custody suite and also the driver of the, the vehicle that was also here to meet him, he's also been brought here, the taxi driver. All three are under arrest and placed in cells for questioning. It's now up to the investigation team to find out who was responsible and ensure a successful prosecution. It's another important seizure, but with all the suspects claiming to know nothing about the cocaine, it could take some time to work out who's guilty. After a long wait for a technical officer to arrive, the driver of the suspect Libyan vehicle is getting annoyed. You can see the car. Yeah, um, can, can you just give me an idea? How long is it going to take, please? Well, I really can't well, give you. 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours, what? I, mean. I would suggest, you know, if we don't find anything, you know, probably half an hour, 45 minutes if we don't find anything. The car is suspiciously clean, having just driven 2,000 miles from Africa. This, this is the problem with the vehicle, is it looks too clean. The inside's totally clean. They need to examine every possible space to ensure it's not being used for smuggling. And we're trying to be as, as, you know, as reasonable with you and as tight as we can. I'll tell you what, the Brits come in and out of Libya. Yes. But not a single person gets these people. And hopefully I'll try to explain to you as reasonable as I can as to why we're doing it for. Um, we will look after the car. The officers are expert mechanics, but this man is clearly very protective of his new car. Do I look like a drug dealer? Do I? No. Hey? I'm not a good enough person to, you know, to really reckon that the drug dealer is You've been doing this job long mm -hmm. enough. I mean, should, surely you should know, shouldn't you? Not everyone that smuggles is obvious to us. The whole search takes nearly two hours and finds nothing. And the long wait has allowed the angry driver to calm down. Your car has been looked at. Mm -hmm. They haven't reduced it to the of or anything like They haven't, have they? No, honestly, they haven't. these honestly, are surely they, they haven't. They haven't. So you'll have the car back in a couple of minutes and we'll let you put your bags in and we'll let you out the back gates. OK, you know, we're on your way. All right. OK, thanks for your... I'm sorry if I was a bit abrasive, you know, just to... Don't worry, part of, part of the daily grind of what's what. <laughs> Nobody likes the car being put on the rack. Never wrecked my car, have you? You are more than welcome to obviously check it's it out. there. <laughs> that was there before we got here, then. Not the... It's not so much the delay, it's just the actual... You know, I have no idea what has been taken out of the car and what has been put back in the car. I don't know. It's quite upsetting. Still to come. In Bristol, the usual officers have been joined by the National Strike Force to carry out house searches on people suspected of dealing illegal cigarettes. All the intelligence has come from anonymous tip-offs on the Customs Confidential Hotline. I've got, I think it's 19 packages from Tobacco NIU. Um, hopefully to execute today. For officers entering suspects' homes, it can be dangerous. I've been yeah. in a situation before where the whole street is sort of cut yeah. out and I don't yeah. know what else. You don't yeah. want to hang around. No, once you're on the ground. If you don't like it, you're out. Yeah. So. It may seem heavy-handed for selling a few cigarettes, but the black market costs the Treasury £2 billion a year. We're going to this lady in Bristol. Information has been received that she could be selling cigarettes at her home address. Started selling cigarettes in the past two weeks and have been dealing Lambert and Butler. We've also got to be very mindful with this that a lot of this could be malicious as well, so <laughs> it could just be a, a stitch up. 
Many tip-offs are found to be false, so the officers initially go in without a warrant. And that means negotiating permission to search the house. Hello there. This is not Hello, Hong Revenue and Custom. Right, basically, we've had information that you may be selling cigarettes from the premises. Okay, and I'd like to just pop in and have a chat with you about it, if that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Luckily, the woman confesses and lets them in. Basically, what have you been doing? Your son's brought cigarettes back from holiday. What have you been basically selling the cigarettes? And all the evidence the officers need is sitting on the dining room table. We need to do a search in the house, if that's okay. Yeah, there's a few in the front there, which is around back. And that, that's all it is. Right, okay. Do you want that? Make me feel like a terrible thief. I feel like a terrible thief. And she's obviously a bit nervous. She knows that she's done something wrong. She's got a kitty set up downstairs with all her facts. There's a big suitcase here that shows that somebody travelled to Parma in Spain on the 9th of October, whether that was her or her son. So it's a very big case, very typical, a cigarette smuggler's case. Is that your big suitcase up there, the big half-sided one in the spare room? Well, we all use it, you know? Right, all right. You're not right. committing an offence by selling these cigarettes, OK? So the goods will be seized from you. And with perfect timing, a customer turns up to find the shop closed indefinitely. And the guy just comes to the premises and we've got shop. Oh, right. What, somebody's just come and gone? Yeah. Looks like we've just had a buyer that's just... The black market is clearly booming in Bristol. In Gatwick, the Customs Intelligence Hub has given officers information that a drug swallower is coming in from the Caribbean. A girl being questioned at immigration seems suspicious enough for Customs to do a drug swab which gives a massive hit for cocaine. Drug swallowers are often forced into the crime and told nothing of the dangers and the possible lethal consequences of a burst package. She said that she actually came in with someone named Peter. She met him on the beach and he's got all her money, 400 pounds, and he's already gone through. So it doesn't look too good, you know. The suspect has denied taking cocaine so a positive urine test would suggest she has swallowed drugs. There's no line by the THC, so she's positive for cannabis. There's no line by the COC, so she's positive for cocaine as well, which would indicate to us that she has cocaine in her system. The woman will now be arrested and x-rayed for packages. Oh, showing up positive mm. for cocaine. Yeah, OK. But to the officer's frustration, she's now claiming to have used drugs. Well, bad, you know, well, man, talk, just for bad, and I have taken cocaine. She has uh, taken it. Yeah. Right, OK. She has taken it, yeah? She has taken it. Uh, why didn't she tell me earlier when I put you in the She was worried. She was worried. Yeah. Right. OK. But the officers aren't convinced. So we just want to be sure you haven't got any internal consumer in it. They suspect she may be pregnant and so will be taken to a private hospital to have her body scanned safely. That means waiting for another interpreter and that means putting on the white suit. Because she's, um, we've got her on suspicion of swallowing, um, we always put them in a white suit because what we'd be concerned about is she maybe started to pass packages in the cell, whether she may pick them up and harm to herself. Sometimes it might be possible that she could retry and swallow them again. We can see through the suit, that's why we need her in, in the white suit. The officers are extremely concerned for the woman's health and all the signs are pointing to a definite swallower. If so, she'd be looking at a lengthy sentence. It's a bit concerning because with her, her original story, when we asked her, she, she doesn't touch drugs, she doesn't drink. It's then, oh, well, I smoke marijuana, um, I have taken cocaine. So her story is continually changing. When we take her down, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see packages in her body from the way her story is. It's a nervous ride to the hospital, which could decide the woman's future. Customs officers also stop smugglers who try to bring in drugs using the postal system. In October 2002, a routine parcel exam uncovered a massive haul of drugs hidden in a shipment of doors. And I recall getting a, a phone call at home that there'd been a major seizure. Within it, they found whole dolls. And examining the whole dolls, they found packages which turned out to be a mixture of Class A and B drugs. 
Um, and I can recall getting a phone call about two hours after that to uh, advise me that they had found something else. In the bogs were live ammunition rounds and something altogether more frightening. They came across another box and you can imagine their surprise when they opened it to find a grenade. And I think everyone stepped back about half a mile. The decision was made to do a controlled delivery and catch the culprits in the act. But all they had to go on was the consignment address in Devon and a phone number which belonged to Timothy Andrews. One individual in particular, Timothy Andrews, we conducted surveillance on him uh, over that weekend. Officers tailed Andrews round the clock for three days. Mobile phone analysis identified Andrews' partner in crime, Andrew Griffiths. The race was now on to get the package delivered on time. The team replaced all the drugs and ammunition with props and prepared to make the delivery. The control delivery commenced on the, uh, on the Monday morning. One of our officers acted as the TNT delivery driver. He drove it down to the address, the consignment address in Ivy Bridge. Uh, but within the actual consignment, we had placed um, an audio device, in fact, a number of audio devices. The officers were hiding, waiting for the right time to strike. Uh, when it became clear that the package was been broken into and been dismantled, um, I decided at that point that I would call the knock. 50 armed officers stormed the building and found two henchmen. Andrews and Griffiths were elsewhere, but were still being followed and were arrested. They would plead not guilty, but customs investigators used mobile phone cell tracking information to tie them to the crime scene. But on, on this occasion and on four previous occasions, where consignments had gone to, to that address, that they had been in the vicinity. Um, and that's more than coincidence. The evidence convinced the jury it was Andrews and Griffiths behind the crime. The henchmen were acquitted, and the sentences handed down to the smugglers made a happy ending for the officers. Um, the sentences handed down by uh, judge, trial judge, uh, resulted in, in a 40-year sentence for Griffiths and a 39-year sentence for Andrews but they will be serving at least 15 years. Back in Bristol, Russ and Jane haven't found any more cigarettes and decide not to prosecute the woman. Instead, they want her to turn informant. But, um, do you think we can get some, try and get some details about her son? His name? I think we've got to, if we can. Young lad, where's he, where's he picking these up for? We, uh, the... No, I'm not getting you into trouble. Seizing the 9,000 cigarettes, yeah. they now want to get out before it turns ugly. We don't really have the public on our side because the locals think she's providing a service. So people aren't sympathetic to us. So sometimes once people have clocked who we are, it's better to just get the fags and get out, isn't it? In Gatwick, the suspected swallower is back with the x-rays. She's put back in the cell while the officers take a look at the results. If she had swallowed something, you you would possibly see the shapes of packages. They'd be down here, they can be collected up around here, and there's nothing, there's nothing at all. Compared to an actual swallower, the difference is clear. See the package shapes collected down there, whereas that one is totally no shapes whatsoever in that one. It was negative. It's an anti-climax for the officers, but they're glad she'll be OK. Take her back up to the south terminal if she wants to, so she could be on her way. Yeah, it's negative. <laughs> Every, all the way down the line to me, I was thinking, yeah, it's going to be positive, positive. The way she was acting and the things she was saying, but sometimes it happens like that, you know. Six months later, the Gatwick cocaine smugglers pleaded guilty and were sentenced to six and a half years in prison. The taxi driver was released without charge.